Hi everyone, it's Carolyn Brown here. I'm the co-founder of Career Care Package. We help you break the rules, think differently and win more jobs. Now today, I'm really pleased to bring you a video on how to construct a resume if you want to change careers. It's easy to write a resume if you know what you want or you're going to a similar job, but if you want to pivot, if you want to do something a little bit differently, if you want to highlight what you can bring from one area to another, a lot of people really struggle with that. So today I'm going to give you five tips. I'm going to give you an example of a resume that's worked and I'm going to give you that example in a free download. So I really hope you find this video informative and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so my tip number one, and it's actually the most important thing, because whenever somebody is looking at your resume, they're going to be asking this question, especially if you're trying to change careers. The number one question is why? So why do you want to make this change? Is it something that you've done in study that sparked your interest? Is it something that you've done in previous work? Have you done some community work or some volunteer work that uh, gives you an indicator that this might be a good career move for you? So when you know why, it's very easy to explain that on the resume in a career objective. It's very easy to explain it in interview. It's very easy to explain it on cover letter. So if you can come up with a succinct statement around why you want to make this change, it shows that you've actually done some research around it and you're not just sort of randomly poking your resume out there. So my second bit of advice is a little bit controversial because if you watch uh, what other career experts say or other resume writers say, they'll tell you to identify your transferable skills. And they'll say things like, you know, if you're a manager in one context, you could be a manager in another context. So you need to think about things like time management, project management, um, leadership, communication, client servicing, all of that kind of stuff. Now, some of those skills might be transferable, but what a recruiter and what an employer is really looking for is relevance to them. So it's a little bit different and you need to be more specific. So what I suggest you do is you go online, look at job advertisements for the job that you want to go for and see what they um, regularly list as skills and requirements. Get a bit of paper and on the left hand side put the skills or requirements that they're, they're seeking and on the right hand side write how you can match those up. That will keep your resume focused on what's actually relevant and they're the types of things that you need to be highlighting on your resume in terms of accountabilities or value delivered or achievements. Just to give you a little example, a friend of mine is a career counsellor and he actually, one of his career aspirations is to go into more pure counselling a more pure counselling role. So in his career counselling role, he does things like one-on-one -on -one counselling, he does group, group work in terms of training, and he does content marketing and administration. The bit that would be relevant for a pure counselling role is the one-on-one -on -one and group counselling or group training that he does, and they're the bits that he um, should highlight on his resume. So you really want to keep it focused about relevance to the actual employer or sorry, relevant to the, the job advertisement that you're going for, rather than going too broad or too scattergun with a laundry list of um, skills that you think might be relevant. So this comes from your research. It comes from research of advertisements. It comes from talking to your network. It comes from looking at, um, at job descriptions. It comes from looking at LinkedIn profiles of people that are actually doing what you want to do. So my tip number three is keeping it short and sweet. So basically you want to keep the resume relevant to the job that you're going for. You don't need to include every job. You don't need to include all of your experience. You just want the relevant bits because employers and recruiters are really time poor and that's what they're going to be trying to look for in your resume and you don't want them to have to guess around why you're actually applying for the job. Okay, so my tip number four is to showcase your relevant achievements. Now, I know I keep banging on about this word relevant, but it's so important. You want to showcase what is actually important to the employer. Now, an employer has in a job that they're advertising some things that you're supposed to deliver, some KPIs or metrics that you're supposed to meet. You want to go back through your past roles and work out which achievements actually show your ability to deliver 
the, to those metrics. And when you write your achievement statements, you actually want to re lead with the metric that is most important to the employer. That way they can pick them up and read them really, really easily. And again, it shows that you've done your homework. Okay, so my tip number five is to create a really powerful front page. Recruiters and employers are really time poor. They don't have time to go through pages and pages and pages of resumes. They really want to see it quickly and they really want to make a decision quickly. So basically on a front page for a career change resume, I make it the page that you could read and you don't really need to read the rest of the resume. So basically I have a career objective, I have relevant skills and knowledge, I have relevant achievements, and I have a snapshot of jobs that people have had. And that fits neatly on a front page. You could almost just read that front page without actually having to go any further. So this is an example of a career change CV and it's an actual example of a client of mine. Now Julia, I've changed all the details of course, but Julia wanted to change from having her own small business, which was a WordPress and web design business, to becoming a content and copywriter for a government department specialising in children's health, so communications for children's health. Now, of course, content and copywriting wasn't all that Julia did, but that's a bit that we pulled out of her experience and we showcased her CV. We built the CV around the role that she was going for. So everything on that CV has a place in terms of marketing her for that particular role. So you can see that we started off with expert writer content and copy rather than saying WordPress designer, small business owner. That's not our target. So anybody looking at the CV can see pretty quickly that that's what she's actually applying for. They don't need to guess. So um, we also looked at how she could uh, have a pitch around wanting to go for that type of role. So we put a love of design and communication for children. So me study early on to become a children's writer. With my mother, brother, sister-in-law working in mental health, I understand their lived experience and I can bring a deep empathy for the audience and a desire to support others in their service. I'm delighted to present skills honed over a 10 plus year career in content and copywriting. So that's her pitch, you know, from my recent role with Big Wombat, project managing web design, digital marketing campaigns and creating content, I can offer a holistic approach to the role of content writer. So how she's going to use her previous experience to market herself for that specific role and what the benefit is, is of that experience. I understand the relationships between uh, all involved uh, in projects from developers, videographers, digital designers, meaning I can collaborate effectively as a team member, supporting our, all our objectives. So we pulled out her uh, skills and knowledge that were relevant based on you know the work that she'd done and what they're asking. So we didn't include all her skills and knowledge. We didn't include her, all her technical skills, only the relevant ones. We put a little bit of a career summary so we could explain it. And then we looked at what the key requirements for the role were and lined up some achievements that demonstrated her capacity to perform that task. So writing copy for web and intranet pages, we put some achievements that were relevant there. App design and social media, some achievements that were relevant there. E-newsletters and blogs, some achievements that were relevant there. So you notice that these, these achievements are all around content and copy. We don't talk about small business achievements. We don't talk more broadly about web design. We just really hone in on what they're asking and what achievements Julia has that she can actually present on her CV to demonstrate that she's got that capability. Pretty much the front page in a little bit is pitching her for the role and that's you could just look at that front page and see whether she could do the role or not. And then on pages two and three, we basically went the normal traditional CV route, but also really just talking about content and copying copy, sorry, much more so than actually what she's done more broadly in her business. But we did pull out her client focus. So this is a CV that actually got Julia interviews around content and copy type roles. It's built specifically for those roles. It's really obvious what she can bring to those roles. This CV I'll make available to you. I'll put a link for a free download in the description below so you can actually see how you can bring what you've got from previous roles, a desire into 
your career change CV. So I really hope this has been helpful for you. If you like what you see, please subscribe and please hit the bell notification. And also, if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up. That will mean lots more people can see this video and hopefully nobody will be in the dark about making your career change resume ever again. Thank you.